Trot, in Arizona, uses a meander in equine-assisted therapy for physically disabled people. People come in all heights and weights, so it's necessary to have a variety of horses with calm temperaments to carry them. Riders' muscles are kept flexible by the movement of the horse. Paraplegics require a special saddle to keep them stable and confident on the horse. A hoist is used to lift the rider from the wheelchair into the saddle. Trot replaced their labyrinth with a meander in the shape of their logo. However, a meander can become a labyrinth, so the soul of the labyrinth is still present. The start of a labyrinth is the dot in the center. Before a rider is mounted on a horse, they are introduced to the horse in the same way that you start to draw a labyrinth, from a dot in the middle of a circle. So it is with rider and horse. Here we see a wheelchair's concrete dot in a round horse pin. To give wheelchair users confidence, the person is introduced to a large horse with no halter moving around them. Compare the size of the hooves to the tracks of the wheelchair. Marla gains a sense of empowerment by using her arm and body language to control and turn wizard in the round pin. Horses are empathetic animals and communicate well with people. Marla is thanking wizard for working with her. He will soon carry her around the meander on his back. For now, he acknowledges her paralyzed legs with a nuzzle. Riders' thank yous are always followed by a huge smile. Riders have a helper on each side in case they lose balance, a therapist instructor, and a wrangler to be at the horse's head. Macy grew up unable to stand or keep her balance and was very fearful of trying to stand. Through riding, she strengthened her muscles and gained confidence in movement. Macy is now able to walk with a helping hand. Macy practices in the arena before going into the meander. Trotting gives her physical confidence and the joy of moving fast, like other children. She is taught to guide Monty around corners before they ride the meander. Using her arms exercises her muscles. Mary, the therapist, is showing Macy where to go, helping her look ahead, and safely plan her and Monty's next move. Macy is reminded how to guide Monty around the meander using the reins. The helpers walk beside Monty so that they can intervene in case of a mishap. They are at the ready to keep Macy securely in the saddle. Their presence gives Macy confidence so that she can relax and enjoy the ride. Relaxation increases the benefit of her therapy as each turn in the meander carries her further on her path to healing. A variety of terrain in a labyrinth uses a rider's muscles in different ways and develops a sense of balance and core strength as they move with the horse. The course of the meander, dipping down below ground level, provides a sense of adventure often lacking in a disabled person's day-to-day -day life. Riders are taught or helped to thank the horse for their ride. This action is helpful for an autistic person learning to communicate. Mike rode horses before he became legally blind. He remembers the movement of a horse turning around a barrel as he practices for riding the meander. A rider who becomes paraplegic knows the timing and feel of a horse's footfalls, so the body responds to four beats and the turns. Fred is taught to control Tiny, so that even if he cannot control himself well on the ground, he can on a horse. Keeping Tiny moving and going around corners also helps Fred keep his attention focused, as he's easily distracted. Each of these young men has a different disability, or his body is recovering from a bad accident. As they guide their horses along the path, it gives the young men a sense of independence that they do not experience in their day-to-day -day life. Riders learn to pace themselves as they journey towards their destinations, allowing space for others along the way. As the riders negotiate the tight corners of the meander, their bodies move with their horses, building up coordination, strength, and balance. After Christopher dismounts from Bisbee, he discusses the ride with his therapist instructor, and they give a high five of mutual appreciation and hope for continued healing. As the horses are led away, you can see how the undulations of their bodies can help riders' movement-impaired muscles. After work, the horses are rewarded with rest and grazing. 
Centaur Leadership Services at Prescott College in Arizona trains counselors in equine-assisted therapy. To show the process by which clients heal, we will see volunteers work with equines in a classic labyrinth with a 40-foot round pen at the center. The volunteers are taught how to do a body scan and ask, Who am I? The counselor teaches everyone how to quiet themselves and gives questions to ask in the labyrinth to help them reflect on their lives. Going in, where have you been? Coming out, where are you going? The horses see people approaching the gate with halters. The people respectfully ask permission of the horses to enter their pasture. A horse will show he is willing to be caught when he notices a person and walks toward her. Rachel chooses a horse and invites him to work by holding her palms open. She starts by touching the horse and then patting him. Then she backs off to give the horse a chance to accept her invitation to work. The horse accepts Rachel and approaches her, willing to be caught, knowing that a halter means work. Rachel puts the halter on the horse and starts leading him away from the herd towards the gate. Sadie the mule is following closely. Elizabeth has caught Blackie and leads him to the gate. Here, Elizabeth, Rachel, and Jaina lead their equines to the labyrinth. Peg and Indigo have been working together for four years, so Indigo follows Peg with no halter, taking cues from her body language. Patience is a virtue as they quiet themselves and wait their turn to enter. Sharon reminds Elizabeth of the questions to ask as she heads for the labyrinth. She tells her to wait calmly with her mule in the center of the labyrinth until the last person enters the round pen. Rachel leads her mule, Sadie, into the labyrinth, respectfully spacing herself from the person ahead. Walking the labyrinth with equines reveals the different ways humans behave with them. Equines reflect human behaviors and start cooperating as humans' behavior changes. The mule Mary Beth balks at the corner, so Elizabeth finds a way to communicate with her and coax her around this change in the path's direction. Rachel and Sadie arrive in Mary Beth's space, thus providing help to solve the problem. Clients are taught to communicate with their equines and cooperate with each other and can experience beneficial results. These paths are four feet wide, leaving space for horses and riders to pass in adjacent paths. Peg and Indigo walk beside each other without a halter. Elizabeth and Mary Beth are still learning to cooperate with each other. Jaina and Hercules are teaching each other not to be distracted from the paths they are on at present. Hercules gets encouragement and kindness from Jaina to stay on the current job of walking around the labyrinth. When everyone is gathered in the round pen at the center of the labyrinth, they are given time to reflect upon their past lives. Then they let go of the past, which leaves them free to look ahead and contemplate their future during the walk out of the labyrinth. For Hercules, the grass is greener on the other side. Sadie is still completely in the present, working with Rachel and sticking close to her as they leave the labyrinth. Hercules requires firmer encouragement, swishing his tail in opposition before agreeing with Jaina to stay on the right path so they can complete their journey together. Everyone leaves the labyrinth to gather in the shade with their equines and share what they've learned about themselves during the labyrinth walk. Sharon asks everyone what they learned as they caught their horses in the pasture. Did they get a positive response from the horse by a gentle approach? A client gains a good experience by using non-threatening behavior and can compare it with the results of past behavior. Rachel breathes with and demonstrates snorting with her equine, who seemed surprised that humans snort too. Sharon draws out Jaina's experience. Jaina describes an injured horse that asked to be caught which reminds her that her family lives far away. She feels lonely not having anyone to care for her. In response to sharing asking what everyone's experiences have been, Elizabeth shares that she had realized a dream by being in a labyrinth. She compares getting Mary Beth around the labyrinth's corners to life's problems, which can be overcome. Peg tells how she and Indico have each been through difficult times and have learned that they can trust each other. The labyrinth is a safe place that helped them build enough confidence for Indigo to be ridden without a saddle or bridle. Now they have the courage to go on trail rides outside the safety of the labyrinth. As Rachel sits under Sadie's neck, she describes how they both seem to be present. Sadie taught Rachel that life is good, so why not live in the moment and enjoy life? 
Jaina said Hercules is a good teacher, reminding her to stay on track and not get distracted. Clients are taught to thank their equines for teaching the day's lesson. Indigo thanks Peg by standing still as she leans against him. Mary Beth finally cooperates and turns her head to Elizabeth. Jaina strokes Hercules, knowing that they are both trying to find their way. U-Haul joined in as the teacher's pet, stretching out his head in enjoyment. The horses are returned to the companionship of the herd and rewarded with freedom from work. At the end of the day, everyone walks with a confident step after learning life lessons from their equine partners.